Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV. In this week's episode, we're going to discuss the different types of travel trailers that you could tow with your Jeep. And in our tip segment, we're going to discuss the thought processes that went behind the purchase of mine. So stick around. So those of you who have been viewing my videos for a while, you might remember the video on how I pack my Jeep for camping and we enjoy camping out of the Jeep. It allows us to do some off-road camping or overlanding such as the Cape Breton Adventure and we really enjoy doing that. We even winter camped out of the Jeep. But after doing the video a couple weeks back of showing what Jeepers tow with their Jeeps and we saw how they were towing travel trailers, my wife and I thought we'd consider possibly looking at getting a travel trailer as well. It'd be suitable, for example, for going around to provincial parks and maybe traveling to other parts of the country. Now, I am going to review the different types of travel trailers in this video, but I'm going to steer clear from the off-road variety because that's a whole other genre all to it. Itself. So let's have a quick look at the different types of travel trailers there are to pick from and we'll go over the pros and cons and then in our tip segment I'm going to share with you some of the thought processes that went behind the purchase of ours. The first type of travel trailer is the pop-up travel trailer. You can see on your screen here a Jeep branded version of a pop-up travel trailer but here you can see the more traditional type of pop-up trailer. Now there are many brands out there, but I suggest if you were thinking of getting yourself one of these types of travel trailers, you'd want to get one that's manufactured near you so you could deal with servicing and maintenance matters. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of a pop-up trailer. The pros are the unit folds down. This provides less wind resistance when traveling. These can be very lightweight if you get a small unit. Mind you, I have seen some larger units optioned out that get pretty heavy, but overall they're lightweight. And as a result of all this, you can get really good fuel efficiency. These are easy to store. You can just put them in your garage. And if you get a small unit not optioned out too much, it won't be that expensive. Now the cons are that the unit has canvas sides. So when it's raining out or it's windy, it may not feel that comfortable inside. So it's overall less weatherproof. Some people feel that it has an awkward layout on the inside. And then when it's cold out, rainy, or if the bugs are out, you have to deal with the setup and takedown process for this type of travel trailer. Another type of travel trailer is the A-frame or the hard-sided pop-up trailer. Here we have the A-Liner brand, but there are other brands out there. So now let's have a look at some of the pros and cons. So the pros are that this unit folds down, so therefore there's very little wind resistance when you're towing it. Now the models of these types of trailers come in different sizes, so they can be lightweight. And as a result of all this, you'll experience better fuel efficiency than in some more traditional types of trailers. Now with it being hard sided, you might feel it's a little more comfortable if it was raining or windy outside. And these are also easy to store. They just fold down and you could just put them in your garage. And if you get yourself a small model, it could be relatively inexpensive. Now the cons, these units have many moving parts and hinges and the such. And after some use, you're gonna find yourself looking at a few repairs. These units can also be a little drafty in the weather. So I've seen some videos online of people using these to camp in cooler weather and they're shoving pool noodles and foam in the cracks to try to keep the weather out. Some people might feel that there's an awkward layout where there's a table where the ceiling slope is a little too close. These units also have the setup and takedown process that you have to contend with no matter what the weather or the bug condition. The next type of travel trailer are the teardrop and I'll say the small category. And you see in this image, this Jeep is towing a teardrop trailer. And this is from the RV Easy website where you could rent one of these for $79 a night. Now in this shot here, you can see how the side door opens up and there's a space that's large enough for you to lay down in. So when you want to sleep, you're inside a hard shelled structure and out of the elements. 
and then if you want to cook you have to be outside behind the hatch there and you can see that's where all your camping supplies and your food can be kept and you would have to cook outside under that hatch so let's talk about the pros and cons the pros are this has a very low profile and the teardrop shape means you have very little wind resistance these can be very lightweight which would provide better fuel efficiency these can also be a DIY project. There's many videos online that show people making these and these would definitely be easy to store because they're lightweight and they're small. You could put them in the garage and overall these aren't going to be as expensive as more traditional types of travel trailers. Some of the cons, well, you can't stand up inside these units. So if you needed to go to the bathroom or get dressed, uh, you have to contend with that. Some people might find the whole idea of sleeping in one of these a little claustrophobic. And when you have to cook, you have to go outside. Even if it's raining, the only way to cook is under that hatch at the back. And then finally, some people feel that there's very limited space in one of these units. Then you have what I call the larger types of teardrops and there are many different manufacturers of these large type of teardrop trailers. I'm just showing you the little guy versions right here but you can find many examples of these types of larger teardrop trailers by different manufacturers. Now here you can see the little guy Micromax and then it graduates up to the little guy Minimax and then finally you get this big boy the little guy max so you can see even though we're getting into the larger sizes these are still teardrop shaped so let's talk about the pros and cons of these larger teardrop trailers the pros you still get the teardrop profile so you get less wind resistance when you're driving which would help your fuel efficiency you can stand inside these units you get full amenities as options that are available in these units including bathrooms and showers and some of them can be easily stored like the first unit that I showed you even though you can get all the amenities in that trailer it can still be stored in a garage and also this style of travel trailer has become quite popular cons well now we're getting into trailers that can be a little expensive we're talking tens of thousands of dollars to get into one of these now the next type of trailer i refer to as the traditional type of trailer some people used to call them stick build trailers where the frame and the walls of the travel trailer would be made with two by two lumber and the walls would be made of corrugated aluminum and although that's how they used to make these types of trailers that i refer to as your traditional type of trailer they're also making them now with aluminum frames as well as fiberglass sheathing instead of the corrugated aluminum so there is some different types of technology that's being used but when you get into like you can see here in this Lance model this traditional type of shape of trailer there's going to be some pros and cons so let's have a look at that so for the pros you get the full set of amenities available from washroom showers your black water tanks and gray water tanks televisions microwaves these units provide more space and if you get a smaller model and you don't option it out and if you get the stick build with the corrugated aluminum siding it can be a little less expensive the cons well people are putting aluminum framing and fiberglass walls and sometimes composite walls so they can also get expensive to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars as well these units tend not to be as aerodynamic as the previous models we discussed they tend to get towards the heavy side for people towing with a Jeep and all that affects fuel efficiency. These are not easily stored. You can't tuck one of these into your garage unless you have a very large garage and a taller garage door. And these units tend not to have as high a resale value as some of the other models we discussed. And then finally, I'd like to discuss the all fiberglass hull type of travel trailers. This company is Lair, where they manufacture these Trillium Heritage Series fiberglass hull travel trailers, but there are different manufacturers. You've got 
Happy Camper, Armadillo, Outback Travel Trailer Company in Alberta. You might be familiar with other brands like Casita, Scamp, Escape, Oliver. So there are quite a number of companies that make them. And this company, Lair in Kitchener, has the fiberglass molds for the old Trillium travel trailer that was made back in the 70s. And so what they do is they remanufacture these trailers with new technology and new windows and other amenities. And they sell these brand new on the market, just like the other brands that I mentioned. So let's take a look at the pros and cons. Pros, these are very lightweight. They have a 1300 model, which is the smaller version. Then they have the 4500 model, which is a little bit bigger, but they're still very lightweight, which gives you better fuel efficiency. You can get full amenities and get these optioned out to anything you want in them. And basically, because of the construction, there are very few moving parts. And as such, these units tend to last forever. In fact, you can see many bowlers and trilliums. Those are similar constructed travel trailers from the 70s that are still out and about and are very popular. And as such, these types of travel trailers have a very high resale value. Now the cons is that they can get somewhat expensive. I know at Lair they start at 26,000 Canadian, but when you option it out, I'm sure you're going to be pushing to 30. And then also there's a very long wait time if you were to order one of these new. Now that's also the case if you were to order a Casita, a Scamp, or from anywhere where trailers are being manufactured. It takes a little while for these things to get built. So you can see there's quite a few options. And now let's go on to the tip segment where I'm going to discuss with you some money saving tips and the thought processes that went behind the selection of our travel trailer. Now for some cheaper, cheaper tips. Well, now that you've seen the different types of travel trailers that you have available to you as options to tow behind a Jeep Wrangler, it's still quite a daunting choice. That's why I recommend to you that you check out a Facebook group called Wrangler RV. Now, I did mention this in a prior video, and if you go to that Facebook group, you'll see other Jeep owners such as yourself who tow travel trailers and they tow all kinds of travel trailers and you can see what they have to say as they share their experiences. You can even go ahead and ask some questions there. So that's a really good place to start. Either way, spending the kind of money you have to spend on a travel trailer is a little daunting. So like I mentioned in a prior video, you could try renting a travel trailer from sites like RV Easy, for example. And if you're still thinking that you want to purchase a travel trailer and spending all that money is still a little bit of a concern, you could do what I did, and that is purchase a used travel trailer. Now, purchasing a used travel trailer does involve doing a little bit of homework because you have to know what you're getting into because obviously there might be need for repairs and you need to know about those kinds of things, especially if you're new to travel trailering such as myself. So after I read a little bit about the different types of travel trailers, I determined which type I wanted to get. And what I also determined is that there's some used travel trailers that tend to hold their resale value. So if you get yourself one of these, if you decide to get out of it, you'll probably get a lot of your money back. Or if you happen to find yourself a little fixer upper and you're not afraid of a little elbow grease, you're likely to resell it for more than you put into it. And that's what I'm going to talk with you about next week as I introduce you to the travel trailer that I got. But to finish this episode, let's go and look at what our subscribers had to say after last week's episode. And now for subscribers tips. We have a few very good tips that stem from last week's video on how to lift and store your hardtop without a hoist. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, an addition you could consider for version 2 is some felt on the ends of your retracting pegs so they don't scratch the outside of your hardtop. Signed, Andrew from Canadian Jeep Life Facebook. Hey Andrew, I'll have to make sure that the opening is big enough so that the felt won't get caught on anything, but thank you very much for that great tip. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, a set of heavy duty locking casters might be nice. Then you can roll the frame up to the Jeep. Signed, Doug from Washington Jeep Owners Facebook. 
Hey Doug, that's a great tip. It would certainly make it a lot easier than having to back up between the shelves and it'd only be a little bit extra money. But for those of you who are planning to do this on the lawn, maybe near the shed, you'll have to stick with backing into the shelf area. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, you can install wheels to move it and use clamps to lock it down instead of using scraps and screws. Sign, Donald. Hey Donald, that's a great tip. It would certainly be a lot easier if I just used clamps to hold the rooftop to the shelf area rather than having to get out the screws and the scraps of wood. So thank you very much. And if any of you have tips that you'd like to share, please feel free to put them in the comments section below as they may make it into a future episode. Thank you very much. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it helpful. And if you did, how about giving the video a thumbs up? And if you're new to the channel, please feel free to click on that subscribe button right there and the alert bell so you'll be notified when the next video is released. Until then, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.